I am now. You're good to go. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It is uh, March 27th, uh, and uh, we are here 7 o'clock, just a little bit after 7 o'clock, and we're going to have our joint meeting between the select board and the advisory committee, as stated in the charter. Uh, this uh, meeting is going to be both live, and then people are going to be Zooming as well. If you'd like to Zoom in, I will um, give you the phone number. It is uh, 1-646-931. 3860 and the meeting number is 851-241-0179. Uh, enter the code 355297 uh, if you'd like to zoom in the meeting. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order and have an acceptance of the agenda. Second by Ms. Curran. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Ms. Canfield is uh, here remotely, so we'll be doing roll call votes for everything. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Ms. Canfield? Aye. Ms. Connolly? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Chair, um, who made the motion to second again? I'm sorry, I was a little slow. Motion, motion second. 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 second by Thank you. Great. Before we get started, I'd like to read this statement. Um, the Situate Select Board and Advisory Board encourage an environment of respect during meetings, and we encourage all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there is disagreement. We value the participation of our community, and we want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized communities, to feel welcome and respected. We urge our committee members and all who participate to commit to these standards, to support and respect our community, and to participate in an orderly and peaceful manner. That being said, before we jump to the meeting, I do just want to um, recognize the great service. As many of you know, we had a, a devastating fire um, this past, over the last couple of days, or this weekend, down in Minot Beach. And I just want to thank all the firefighters, all the police force, um, all the communities that jumped in and helped us to, to really get, keep that thing under control. It was devastating and huge. We saw pictures that just looked um, so dangerous and so, um, so really devastating. Um, and we're just very thankful that no one got injured and that there are no casualties or any, any injuries from it at all. There's destruction of, I think it was five or six homes. I don't think mine at Glover looked the same again as, as it did there. But again, just want to thank all the firefighters and everybody who was there to really keep it under control and make sure that, you know, that no one really got injured. So thank you for everybody. Jim, anyone else I should thank? I know there were about six supporting communities that came in and helped as well. Actually, there are nine or ten supporting communities that came in. So we'll be getting a list of all those and sending a letter. We'll have you sign tagging them. But um, really a, a fantastic job. I was there late Friday night. I had several the area chiefs telling me what an outstanding job. The first no uh, situate team that got there did right after the spring. So it could have been a lot worse. The fact that none of the residents got hurt and none of the first responders got hurt is really amazing. So. A fantastic job by everybody involved. Any other comments from? Um, I would just like to add, um, you know, additional to my gratitude is the community support that you know Andrew also mentioned this morning. The same as a community Christmas, really taking care of the residents right away, and and they'll take care of the first responders too with um, giving us the support as well. So they're they're a great asset to our community. And I would also add, uh, you know, the Institute of Harbor. I know they put some some people up up there. Um, they're always very generous and, and help me out in, in emergency situations. Thank you, everybody else. If we missed anybody, um, you know who you are, and uh, thank you very much. That being said, um, Jim, you wanted to turn over to you, and you can, you can uh, get sure. We, it appears we have a quorum. So, uh, good evening, everybody. I'd like to open the meeting at 706, and I need to. A motion to approve the agenda as written. Second. Second. Thank you, Elise. Can you call the roll again? Ms. Seidel? Yes. Mr. Gilmore? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Mr. McGuigan? Aye. Elise. Oh, sorry. Aye. Patricia, oh, okay, that. Okay, okay. so we have, we have uh, 
May I also now have a, a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting as written and submitted? So second. moved. And second? I'll second. Second. Thank you. And can you call the roll, Jerry? Or, uh, Nancy. I'll answer to whatever you call me, Ken. Ms. Seidel? Aye. Mr. Gilmore? Aye. Mr. McGuigan? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Russo? Aye. Okay, thank you. So we are over, and uh, I'll turn it back to you if you'd like to. Sure. Okay, the commence the review. Yeah, I think what we'll do first is, um, you know, this this is a pre annual town meeting get together where we discuss both of us, both groups have done a ton of analysis, been sat through the same amount of meetings, um, asked is probably the same amount of questions about the budgets, and this is the uh, forum that we have to discuss anything that we want to go in further. If there's any discrepancies, we can talk about them here and um, and really just allows us to, as, as kind of the two main branches of the government, to discuss what we're going to be doing at the town meeting. Um, before we do that, I think I'm going to turn it over to, to Jim. He'll give a quick summary of the financial recap of where we are as we go into town meeting, and then um, we'll start looking at the articles. Sure, thank you. This is uh, the presentation that I've done previously. It's been updated for all the new numbers, the changes that were made in the budget. So I'll go through it fairly quickly. Uh, FY22 recap, we've been through that before. We had a very good year in FY22. A lot of that was driven by our new growth. Uh, as it says, the major developments that are driving that growth. Uh, Toll Brothers, Seaside Situate, the Drew Project at Greenbush, Stockbridge Road, 40B, and the 40B and Route 380 Sanctuary at Situate are all winding down at this point. We do not have any projects of that magnitude pending for the planning board at this point that will replace those. Uh, also, given what the Fed's doing, you, we did have a project. I can see that project being pushed off because of the cost of borrowing money to get that done. So um, we had a very good year this year. We were still not planning on that growth going forward. Uh, next slide, please. The new growth, when you start the budget, that actual new growth starts with your base number and adds it to your base number starting for the next year. Uh, we have brought our local receipts up. Uh, we have made a lot of uh, movement on our foreshore. We'll continue on that. The board has approved. We're getting ready to get started on the Oceanside Seawall. Uh, the seawall for Cedar Point. That was one of the projects that we put in for direct federal funding uh, from our legislative delegation along with the water treatment plant, Comorock Water Mains, and some work on the soil treatment plants we put those on. Uh, but we continue to get our reimbursements. We're doing well on those, and those projects are um, moving forward. Next one, please, Seth. How are you doing, it, Nancy? It's Seth. Seth, okay. Uh, revenue assumptions for fiscal 24, which is what we're talking about. Property taxes by two and a half, new growth at 1.2. Uh, the big number since we had our first set of discussion was the governor's budget with an additional 301,000. Uh, we've increased local receipts slightly. Uh, room occupancy taxes for the first time we've used that we have two years of revenue on local occupancy tax so we did put a number in for that factor that in uh, the meals tax remains at two hundred thirty thousand. Uh, again our two big drivers of local receipts are new growth which i just discussed and motor vehicle excise and i think we might see some of the same pressures on motor vehicle excise um, given it went from 1.9 percent of financial down to seven to eight percent of financial down so that may Slow that down. Uh, your major revenue source, the biggest revenue source we have, obviously, is our tax levy, uh, state aid, and the enterprise accounts uh, come in next uh, in local receipts. So the, the vast majority of your revenue comes from the property tax levy. Next one, Seth. It's the breakdown of the tax bills, the average tax bill. You can see where this jumps. Uh, that's generally where the town is not override. Next one, Seth. Please. Just a breakdown of you know, how the money goes, where it goes, how it's broken down. Um, each of those categories is by your budget, and then the employee benefits, as you can see, is all in one. When we do our reconciliation with the state at the end of the year, and we do net school spending and those things, those costs are then attributed back to their actual department. So, uh, but this is the actual dollar amount of the budget that is spent on those departments. As we talked about our local receipts, we are still conservative in our local receipt estimates. Uh, we will continue to be conservative in those estimates. Uh, right now, 
you know, we're kind of in between inflationary period and a potential recession. Uh, so we are keeping those uh, on the conservative side. The budget is designed to finish in the black and then to provide the free cash that we use for our capital within the parameters set by the Department of Revenue, which is three to five percent of your budget should be back as free cash at the end of the year. Next slide, please. We continue to see costs increasing in all our uh, endeavors, uh, water, sewer, anything that requires construction, anything that requires pipes or pumps or uh, anything along those lines are going up. It seems almost exponentially. Uh, our assessments are going up. Uh, we do want to thank uh, Pam Abitabli again, our treasurer. Our pension was originally scheduled about 14 plus percent and her leadership with the Treasurer Collectors Association they did a smoothing so we went down a little bit this year. Next year will be a little bit higher than normal, but uh, really helped us <coughs> free up almost $300,000 for this year's budget. So thank you to her. Uh, we do spend a lot of time on for sure grants or things like that. So uh, we're going to continue having to balance the need for resident services with what is a very limited revenue source, especially when it's increasing. Uh, your budget, as always, I call it a clean budget. It does not by free cash, it does not use stabilization, it only uses recurring revenues. Uh, we did increase our local receipts slightly. We used the governor's budget as a base for local aid that uh, in the 20 something years I've been doing, I think only twice has the governor's budget been higher than the legislative budget. Uh, that's just because the economy was in such a state of free fall those two times. So that's always a very good number to use as your base. Uh, the police contract and the laborers contract, PPW, are currently being negotiated. There are some funds in the budget for that, and depending on where those come out, uh, we either have excess funds or need to find more. Uh, there are two new positions in the general fund budget, uh, actually more than one and a half, a second school resource officer that will be shared between the schools and the town, uh, and then a land use, uh, land enforcement position that the board had added, that'll be a part-time position, and that is in the building department. And then there are three new positions in the golf enterprise. That is a transition from going from a outside contractor to manage the upkeep and maintenance of the golf course to bringing that back in house as Ian discussed it when he was in. Uh, congratulations to Ian and his wife had their baby. So congratulations to him. I know he's not watching, but if he does, uh, congratulations. Good luck to Ian and his wife. And then one new position in the transfer station uh, to help with the Lord at the transfer station cut down on some of the overtime that we're seeing down there, having to bring people in actually from outside the pockets uh, when we have people out at the transfer station. Next slide, please. As you see fixed costs, we've been through these uh, quite a bit. I won't linger on those, debt service down a little bit. Uh, regional school assessment up significantly, and that is uh, because we're studying a lot more studied. 10 more NCAAs and 10 additional students this year. Uh, we'll be going to the most tech, and that's the vast majority of that. Really the highlights of the budget is we have continued to support the services the residents want. Uh, we are balancing those needs with uh, what has to get done. And I think the board is meeting the goals of providing what they need to provide and what they wish to provide to the residents. We we'll continue to make the water and sewer infrastructure upgrades. We'll make some big strides this year uh, with the water treatment plant. Uh, as you've seen in my updates, we're now out there. We're gonna do some uh, digging, some test pits, some soil analysis so we can get the storm water and those things done. Uh, but we'll see some big movement this year on the water and sewer infrastructure, particularly the water. So uh, we continue to aggressively pursue grants. Uh, and as I said, we've applied uh, for four different projects to our federal delegation of uh, potential direct appropriation <coughs> from the Congress with our number one priority, of course, is still the water treatment. Uh, the capital budget, you can link to the capital budget on the town website. Uh, this is the first year that we use Clear to go for the capital budget. I think it was a pretty good process. Um, Potmans are still getting used to it, but uh, they can upload pictures, they can upload all the things they need to upload. It continues, excuse me, to be an aggressive capital budget based upon our free cash. Uh, the capital budget committee did not recommend two of my projects, the MS4 stormwater and a single pickup truck for the DPW. Uh, the board of selectmen approved both of those, plus an additional $1 million for water main work. 
And this is the Jericho Road project, the gas company digging up Jericho Road. Uh, Kevin wanted to get the water main done at the same time, and then we paid that road completely, so we added that. Uh, I would uh, note that the advisory board also supported uh, the capital budget estimated with those two projects and, and the additional money for the water mains. The water mains are the only borrowing in the entire capital project. Uh, there is no other borrowing of capital this year because we are kind of tight uh, with our borrowing. We will have some flexibility in 2025, I believe, Nance. Uh, we have some debt that comes off, but right now uh, we did not want to issue any other debt under the levy until we get some relief. This is your five-year capital plan. I see the big number is obviously <coughs> education, 91 million. That's assuming a new school and $85 million. That's a process uh, where that number is going to come out. We don't know at this point, but right now it's slotted at $85 million. And then of course your water and your sewer departments are still big numbers going forward. Next one, Seth. Your current year capital, sewer and water departments uh, are leading the way. Education is a million seven. Uh, that's the next big one. Uh, but again, there is, is going to be uh, over the next couple of years if and when we get to that in school. Next one, Seth. Just to break down, it's a $22 million total capital plan. Uh, it really hits just about everything that we, we do. Majority free cash up to the enterprise funds, and then again, one borrowing for the water enterprise, and that's in the water lines. Uh, otherwise, it is all cash of some, uh, some manner. Uh, next one, Seth. We'll continue to stress uh, the board's priorities of water and sewer. Uh, we have made some progress in the regional sewer. We're hoping uh, to continue that. We'll apply for some additional grant money for that from the state. Keep moving that forward. Uh, the pension costs and insurance will continue to increase. We had a bad year insurance wise, hopefully, that'll uh, even out in the next couple of years. 2028 uh, is um, again about pension obligation. 2029, sorry, we'll, we'll have paid off our, uh, our pension obligation. So that'll take a big decline at that point, uh, at which point we'll probably be putting most of that into our OPEB, but uh, we will get a lot of relief. Right now, we are on schedule for 2029. For our pension, so that would be a good thing. Um, next one, please. That's it. Uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time because most of us have already covered. The board's well aware of it. I know the advisory board is well aware of it. Uh, so I just got to leave time for questions to take up all your time on if we talk. Great. Um, I'll open up to the select board first, then go over to Jim. Any questions for Jim regarding the budget process or the budget or the presentation you just did? Karen Canfield, anything? Uh, one question. Um, Jim, you said that uh, the board has, has um, indicated a preference to allocate resources towards um, enforcement. And, it, and you recommend, uh, this is new to me anyway, that it's recommended as a position. Is that possible that that work can be accomplished through a contractor? It can be right now. The money is in part-time salaries in the billing department because we need a place to actually put the funds and we can move those as we go forward and make a determination how we want to go forward. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, point out that I'm very happy to see the facilities uh, improvement plan continuing to be worked on. I think it's one of the things that we've had a problem with in the past. So I think that citizens should be happy to see that number what it is. Yeah, I mean, um, Tom meeting directed us to come up with a facilities plan. We went and did this. This is a way for us to basically report back to them that we have the plan, we've done the plan. Here you can see we're meeting the plan on an annual basis. Uh, the important thing is if it's in there in the capital, it can't be spent on something else like it could be if it was in a budget. So uh, make sure that that money goes to those things that it's supposed to go. So we're, we're committed to that. Uh, we're going to try to stay committed to that. Last well, the plan that was made and not put on a shelf implemented. So thank you. In the feasibility room? In the feasibility room. <laughs> right, thank you. No, um, Jim, you probably articulate this better than I can, but can you speak a little bit to 
um, some of the great work that Pam and Nancy have done in this, um, this kind of high interest rates and using our free cash and, and how we're being good stewards with uh, people's money, especially going forward, looking at that. So, well, just done an excellent job. And I know you can kind of yeah, it's, think it's, that it's really a juggling act uh, because under the statute about first thing is secure. Right. So we're securing liquidity return as opposed to a private business which might be returned first. So it really is a balancing act to look at when your revenues come in, when you're going to be spending money, and then what can you take and put over here into a high yield, multi month uh, investment CD or a treasury bill. So I know Nancy and Pam spent a lot of time sitting down, looking ahead, trying to see we won't put a lot of money away. June because we spend a lot of money in July because we pay up our insurance up front, we pay up uh, pensions up front. But then after that, there's no town meeting until November. So you can kind of say, okay, we have this money, we can now invest it. But they spend a lot of time doing that. I know Pam spends a lot of time. Um, this is wrong with put shopping banks uh, to see what she gets for interest rates to see who wants our money. So they work very hard, but at the same time, their first priority is security. So it's kind of like balancing that, but they do a real good job. Um, no, I just want to say thank you. I wasn't at the meeting, so I was out of town where you all discussed the additional, um, where to allocate the additional funds that we got from the governor. So I just want to say thank you to Jim and Nancy and also all of you for being able to accomplish that. With the resource officer is actually going to be shared, correct, to kind of cover some of that summertime um, shift that we need to cover. The request from Chief Thompson, and then secondly, you know, just seeing that enforcement, as Karen had mentioned. Uh, added, I think, is going to really help that those departments. You know, I know we don't always love to throw people at a problem, but I think that's really what we need there. So I just want to say thank you. Great, and I'll just add a few quick things. Um, you know, the whole budget process, which Jim mentioned a second ago, is is um, kind of different than than normal business practices because it is a conservative budget, and it isn't supposed to, you know, it's that fine line between how much money you spend and how, I mean, I'm gonna, I've been on the financial forecast committee for all, and so is, is Andrew and I know both of you have been to the meetings, you know, how much money do you spend and take from different things? And if you look at the charts, you'll see that there's more cash there, but the goal is really not to run into an emergency situation. And we know that any month dollar that we don't spend, we can spend on capital items that we really, frankly, 10 years ago, we weren't able to afford. So the system works great. I want to thank everybody that participated in it. I want to thank Jim for, for your organization and Nancy for all the, the work you've been doing and all the department heads for coming for us and telling us what their, their needs were and what their accomplishments were. It's a long process. They sit before us, they sit before advisory, they sit before other people, capital, and, um, and it works. And uh, a quick kudos to the advisory committee for this great packet that's available to all the citizens out there. Gosh, it feels like a book now. It's, it's gonna be 50, 60 pages here of all the information that you would need to go to town meeting, educated to, to answer the questions. Um, the um, only thing I, I did wanna say, which Warren just touched on, is we did add a couple of positions here, or a couple of, of allocations for communication to the public and for enforcement. And uh, thank you for, for getting that into the budget. I think that those two things are gonna help quite a bit. And um, you know, our goal is to advance the town and advance the services to the residents. And I think those two things will help out quite a bit. So that's my two cents. Jamie, I'll turn it over to you and see if any of your committee has, has questions or comments on the- Well, I, I would just first like to say that uh, the preparation of the advisory committee book is always a challenge for this committee it's taken very seriously. There's lots of back and forth discussion and then the articles are assigned to the individual strong member. Uh, I would say this year because of the changing of the schedule where we were starting earlier and the departments were responding earlier, gave us a greater amount of time to deliberate and create the quality booklet that you have before you this year. Um, we can all remember what things were like 10 or 15 years ago. This is um, milestones ahead of everything. So I would like to thank, on behalf of the advisory committee, and all the department heads, all the budget conscious aware people.
people in the government for making sure that the information was provided in a much greater, more timely manner this year, which allowed us to do our job. And I think it's going to make for a very comprehensive meeting and people can make better decisions for the betterment of the town. So I thank everybody that's involved in this. Um, I'll open up uh, the committee. Does anybody have any questions about uh, any aspect of the book, the budget? This is also a sign of good deliberation where we have beaten a dead horse to some extent. <laughs> so I guess there's no further questions on our end. Well, you've got four people that truly appreciate the work of the advisory committee. We're all on the advisory committee um, at different points and some overlapping. So uh, thank you for the great work you guys do. It's, it's really an asset to the town. Um, all right, that being said, um, why don't we jump into um, some of the articles. This actually is a very small um, warrant. Um, we've got eight articles on the special, and then we have only 17 on the annual town meeting. And I think there's probably, Nancy, correct me if I'm wrong, like maybe nine on the consent agenda. Uh, probably 11. Maybe 11, right? So um, over half of them are on the consent agenda because they really are um, kind of formalities and not really need to discuss. So I'm not going to go through all of those articles, but I would, um, I'd like anybody there, either raise your hand if you're Zooming or in here, if there's something you want to talk about, I'll, go, I'll kind of go through them in groups. And if we need to discuss anything, I know there's there are a few things that we probably saw differently that we may want to discuss, um, but we can go through and discuss any of those. And Nancy's here to answer any questions also. Um, so on the special town meeting, um, you know, a lot of consent stuff there, retiring debt, unpaid bills, some reconciliations, some CPC articles, an easement, and then um, uh, water was bylaw, and then the recreational vehicle and parking and um, that we talked about in a prior town meeting. So any of those uh, topics that anyone wants to discuss between the, between the boards? No. No. Some of this is for timing. We want to get it in the um, special so that the money can be sent before the money's allocated in, in the annual. Um, I know that's, that's part of the, the plan for um, some of the CPC stuff. I don't see any I questions. We're fine on our end. Okay. Great. So now we'll go to the annual town meeting. Um, again, we're going through uh, the first eight or so, or, or 10 actually, really, are all customary articles uh, compensation, uh, capital plan, budget, enterprise funds, stabilization fund of any excess levy. Um, then we've got the revolving funds. I'll stop there because those are ones that we've done every year. Anybody have any questions on any of those to debate or discuss? It's all straightforward. Oh, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we all agree that they were all pretty straightforward. Um, CPC, article number 12, there's a number of. On that, Karen? 13. 13. So there's 13 CPC items that we'll be discussing. Um, <coughs> just going to that, that's on page 36. 36. Jim, when you say 13, does that include the, um, the funding, the 10% funding and yes. all yes. of those? Okay, just check. Page 36 has that. So the first four are, actually the first five are funding type stuff. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight actual physical projects. Um, beach sign, cut without restoration, Pier 44 design and engineering, the train canopy, purple dinosaur playground, Willow Park window replacement, Jenkins playground, and then Mordecai Lincoln um, parking construction. Anybody have any questions on that? I think there was, did you, oh, this is kind of your, yeah. any, any any questions to bring up? I know, was there, uh, I think we agree on most of the things that one article. Did one you... article was uh, where the advisory voted zero to eight against it was the uh, recreation Pier 44, additional $300,000 uh, for continued design study. So I think that's probably the only 
issue on the whole night that we're going to kind of have some discussion on. So why don't we go into it a little bit if you, if you want to, Jane. Sure. Yeah. Um, Linda, did you write the uh, opinion in the uh, in the book? Who wrote the opinion in the book? I did, Jamie. Okay, Elise, could you expound? Because you are the, even as much as today, there was back and forth between you and the Coastal Commission officer. So yeah. please uh, give us the bird's eye view, if you don't mind. Sure. This, um, is, Elise, this is Elise Rousseau, our vice chairman. Hi, everybody. Hi. Not, not chairman of vice, vice chairman. Person. <laughs> Um, oh, right. yeah. I, yes, I think that uh, the committee um, was concerned about um, the amount of money that was being requested um, <clears throat> in light of the in light of the fact that um, we didn't believe that there was adequate parking that would exist to draw a number of people, you know, enough people to the site to make it worth, you know, spending a lot of money. So it was kind of a, a combination of and did what was being proposed um, have adequate parking to attract people, particularly when we were talking about things like um, 100, 100 person capacity pavilion and and um, activities like um, farmers markets and, and concerts and such. So um, I, recently um, we were told at the CPC meeting actually that there may be um, an alternative an alternate solution about parking. Um, and so we have agreed that we will have um, uh, the CPC come back to us at our meeting before the town meeting. And um, if if the information is, is um, you know, will be presented and then we can determine whether or not we wanna do a revote. That That's kind of where it stands. Great. So the main points of contention were the parking for the size of, or the event size that could possibly come there and then the pavilion as well. Well, I think, I think that the pavilion is, is it, 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 I think that the pavilion suggestion um, relates to provision of, of a, you know, cover in the event that there are um, activities like events, like farmers markets, like, uh, concerts and such, um, and and so we questioned whether or not, with only an acre of land here, and we do want to have grass and and you know recreational space, was there even enough room on the site to to get sufficient parking, so that people would be able to come to those kinds of events? And and um, I think that was so. So when I say it's a circle of of thought. I mean, please believe me, we want to see green space there. We, we think it's a fabulous idea. You know, who wants to look at what we have there now, right? Um, so we're very much looking forward to seeing a park there and enjoying those views, looking out over the harbor and all that. Um, I think it was just a question of what are we really going to be spending here and will people be able to use it? A lot of people, people more people than can just walk. Great. Thank you. Can I add to that a little bit? Um, sure, yeah. A couple more things that were brought up uh, over the course of the uh, deliberations. The study that was most recent and fresh in everybody's mind, where there was 1,200 plus um, engagement in that study, we felt that the study was too narrow focused. We felt that in each question of the study, each vision that was presented, which is a suggestive vision only, we understand that, all engaged and all held some type of a canopy structure. There was no option for about, uh, do you want to take it a step at a time, or forgive me for maybe my informal usage of language, or perhaps we should just bring it to a green space with a view, then everybody stand back, take a look at it again in a couple of years, when the town gets more used to that, its understanding of that. That was part of why we felt there was this, uh, and we know there's, we've been reminded there's been a lot of dedicated people to this, and we're not trying to impinge upon their opinions either. And we know there's a lot more in background that we didn't hear 
in the course of three or four presentations. But that was part of it was just this concept that we're we're ending up spending almost six hundred thousand dollars in design studies for something that may not work, and we'd rather see it done incrementally. And anybody in this committee, if you want to comment on that, if I missed something, please please uh, add into that further. I guess not. So now you well, back. Well, Linda and Jerry. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. To call on one of them. Sure, I'm, I'm going to go. Did you want to speak as well? I just wanted to point out that Jerry okay. and Linda. Sorry. All right. Well, Linda, we'll go with you first. Linda? It won't let, oh, here we go. Sorry, I've been trying to unmute myself. I guess that the, the thing, and Elise said it, and, and so did Jamie. When, when this was presented to us, we were told that you know, the expense, the high expense for this was a lot of it was to do engineering and design study to see if you could build a pavilion. And all we're saying is, why spend the money to build something if you don't have the infrastructure to support it? And we have heard that there is some town owned property or something down there, but we've also been told it abuts wetlands. So I think until we're sure that we, that we have a parking issue solved, why would you spend money to study something that you may not ever be able to build because you don't have the parking? So that, that was just the biggest thing. I mean, I think everybody wants to park there. Nobody doesn't want to park there. But I mean, the harbor is, you know, parking's a problem in the harbor. And there's a big, a big, you know, plan coming forward to build a park in the harbor. And that's going to take parking spots away. And so you can't say, well, let's build another park and use more parking spots in the harbor. So I think that the, the parking is an issue, you know, because you want to spend money to study something that we don't have the infrastructure to support. So that's, that's just my take. Thank you. Um, Jerry. Hi, my name is Jerry Kelly. I live at 56 Moreland Road. Um, uh, first off, I would like to enthusiastically support the Pier 44 notion our entire committee is excited to do something with that it's a crown jewel of situate however we're very concerned that if we were to build a structure there it would become an attractive nuisance and a magnet for the towing companies that are going to be towing all the cars that illegally park so we we are enthusiastic about repurposing this property we are very concerned about not being able to satisfy the demand that we'll create. Anybody else? Yeah, I had I had something. I've got my hand up, please. Patrice. Right, Patrice. right. I just I just want to reiterate what I think Jamie said. Maybe Lee said it as well. Again, was the cost? It's quite a big cost, and we don't really have any idea. I mean. It's a bit scary to think what what that might um, uh, fore foretell about the size of the overall project, because I really do feel like you know we ought to have some kind of you know idea of what we want to spend, what we think the, the community might want to spend, on um, and you know make the most of the money we can have for you know one acre of land that we've already spent quite a lot of money on, right? In purchasing it in the previous studies, and now another four hundred thousand um, that indicates a project that may be bigger than many people would want, you know, would want to uh, support with our taxes. So I guess it's just maybe, maybe more of a feeling on my part that we ought to size the, the, uh, uh, the study for this, I, you know, for the project we want in the end, you know, so we, you know, I don't know, want to spend 500,000 or a million or whatever, just raise the building. And what do we have to do to get it shovel ready? Just feel we're a bit out of proportion. Thanks, Patrice. So clearly, you had eight knowledgeable, intelligent people that all came back. It was zero to eight was the vote. So you know it's a different opinion, but you all agreed on it. So that's uh, that's great. Um, let me open it up to our board for just comments. Karen, did you want to start? Yeah, if I may, I've attended many, many, many meetings as our chair, Shark Paul Barkowitz has. Um, we, we did 
our due diligence hiring a firm to design to help us design a park. Um, somebody recently said that, oh, it's just, it would be better if you had done it the way you did the tennis courts. Well, tennis courts, adding a tennis court, adding a tennis court is not as complicated as the site that we're Clearly presented not. with at Pier 44. Um, we believe that we're doing all of the research we should do. We believe that we hired the right firm to help guide us through this. It is going to be a complicated project. Uh, there's no denying it. And um, I personally think, and I think what we've heard from people is they want to know what our options are. And I think we uh, owe it to the town to give the town the expert advice as to what our options might be and whether or not we can move forward based on the site itself. It could turn out to be very difficult to permit. Um, as a matter of fact, it probably will turn out to be difficult to permit. But to, to not consider all the options and not to give everyone the opportunity to weigh in with citizens. And you can get anyone to say, well, I didn't like this survey, I didn't like that survey. They're not easy to construct. But I do think that people feel as though they have been consulted all along the way. And one of the charges we gave to the uh, experts, the uh, design consultants, was communicate, 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 communicate. And so we've been. You know, I use the we because I've been with Paul along the way uh, to many, many, many committees and had many meetings to try to ferret out what it is that people want. Um, the 400,000 that's been, that has been allocated to date for this, the phase one and phase two, which there seems to be some confusion over, um, that came from the MBTA uh, mitigation funds that we still have. And there are very few things that we can spend that mitigation money on. So we thought it best to spend the money on getting to the point where we would have a final design to show to the town and to get the town to approve. Um, and that's why the Shark Committee came to uh, CPC to get funding to bring us to that final phase of pre-construction. The bid documents, the uh, the actual design and then to be ready to go to town meeting and even before that to start exploring options for funding. Um, I know our coastal resource officer has been very good at ferreting out funding already and she's had meetings along with our consultants already to figure out where can we get grant money and we've had some very good feedback from some of these state agencies about the fact that this is a potentially a demonstration project to show what can be done. And the fact that we're tearing down a building and not replacing it with another building is a big A plus in most of these agencies' minds. Um, as for the pavilion, I personally regret the fact that we use the word pavilion. Perhaps shade structure might not have been sounded quite as important. Uh, we don't know if we can even put one on that site. But I think it would be wrong to not do the exploration. And to have gone as far as we've gone, and then simply suggest we tear down the building and throw some grass seed down, which I'm not sure we'd be allowed to do anyway, would not be a good use of um, the town's money. So I would just say to people, uh, many, many, many committees, other than the advisory committee, whose uh, opinion we value greatly, because we all know on this board how much time you spend on looking at things. Sometimes we don't agree, but I certainly think that we're not asking uh, an unreasonable amount to bring this to conclusion so that we can go to town meeting with a request for funds if necessary and uh, a final design. And this project has moved along much the way the library did. Uh, a lot of these projects, they take multiple years to do in multiple meetings. And you just have to keep going and, and hope that we reach the right conclusion. So um, that's why I think that maybe the chair would like to speak to this issue, but I'll give Paul, I'll give you a minute and a second for me. Um, Laura? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm hearing a, a disconnect between feasibility and design phase. Um, you know, I heard the advisory board speak quite a bit about putting additional funds into a feasibility study. And I don't think that's what this is, or else I just cast my vote as well. Um, it's my understanding that we were moving into the design phase. It was my understanding also that these designs were not final and concrete. I also do not want a pavilion down there. 
I do not want this to be a $6 million project. I think we need a beautiful overlook, a park, and parking. I know I have big fights about that with people, but it's our peak season and we need parking slots down there. No, no, no question. So, but I voted in favor of it. So I voted in favor of it because I trust the process and I trust that Karen and Paul and the committee are listening to us that maybe the pavilion isn't what we want. And so it's my understanding that if we get these funds approved, that we can get to the design phase with our consultants, so they can design exactly something that answers those concerns that have been raised. So I voted in favor of it because I did not interpret it as a feasibility study. We've already done that. So I just wanted to, I'm just hearing different things. So I feel like, I, I don't know, I wasn't at all a presentation, but people have interpreted <coughs> So, um, yeah, I guess for after that, this is a fabulous problem to have. Here's what I'm hearing, that, that, that this area might be so good, so many people want to use it, we don't have enough So First, as a community, we need to realize this is a great problem as a community that we need to solve, versus a lot of other communities. So one, just to take, if there's any tension out there to realize this is a fabulous one for us to start talking about. Um, and, I, and I'm with you. I mean, my, when I originally talked about this, I was talking about a splash pad and other things. And I realize now that after not one, but two, but no, three different circles that we've done, that's why some of those things were narrow, were more narrow. The direction has been luminously clear. Again, I always love that. Over the last 12 years, the first survey was 12 years ago. And uh, kind of where what we're talking about, this really was a feasibility stage that we're in, we're moving to that design. And I'm with you that I want to make sure that these issues of parking, everything can be worked out, but I know that they can't be. I know it's not the final design. This is the next phase that we should and want to be moving forward on um, to make sure we can solve those problems. And I know that we can, and I would be heartbroken if um, it gets stopped now because of not just the work, but because we're so close and this design firm is so fabulous. And, and as you say, we're trying to keep costs down. I mean, by looking at some of these aspects, we can really overpromise to get state funds or the money, but the fact that we're thinking about that at the forefront is just fabulous. Um, I love this conversation. I think it's fat. I want to thank the advisory board for this conversation because I think it really helps us flush it out. Um, I guess I would, I would just, or just to, to move forward so we can, we can help solve this. Makes sense. Karen, did you have any comments? Thank you. Yeah, just very quickly. And um, I, I want to echo what Mr. Goodrich said and commend. I have to say the process for this particular project has been a real model for how we uh, look at public projects. Um, I think Shark should be hugely commended for going out there and asking you know people what they think what they like what they don't like well ahead of the you know shovel in the ground and i think it's a model for all of our projects going forward because exactly this this is the time we should be having these conversations and i think advisory brought up a lot of things that we saw in the last survey that people had concerns about like mrs Kerr, ms kern said you know we voted i i personally voted in favor of it because we need to take it to the next step and to, and to flush all those things out and to have continue to have the robust conversation about how do we make this the, the jewel that everyone, advisory and board included, knows this is gonna be. Um, so um, I think it'll be an interesting conversation at town meeting. I think Ms. Kern's point about, you know, we're not talking about feasibility, we're talking about actual design and the fleshing out of, you know, I look at this as almost the fifth stage of where we are. And I'd really like it to go forward. So I look forward to the uh, I look forward to the conversation on town meeting floor. And I hope folks come out and and, and participate because the process uh, we should all be really proud of because it's really exactly what we should be doing on a, a project of this size. Um, I just add so we get five votes and you guys get nine votes, and there's gonna be three, four, five hundred people at town meeting that will decide where the project goes. Um, what I just want to make sure that we both do is our, our job in explaining very well to the people 
what the project is and what the stage is. And, you know, we've got great designs. Personally, I like the pavilion, but people have to understand whether the pavilion is part of it or if that's optional or not. You know, is this the design that we're going to pick one of these three to move forward with? And Patrice brought up the cost. Are we aware of the cost? You know, that, that's our job. Our job is to, we can vote whether we like pavilions or not like pavilions, but our job is to inform the three, four, five hundred people out there of what they're actually voting for in the most amount of detail that we can. And I think if we do that, it's going to work out. We all want something beautiful at that, at that spot. I think ultimately that's what we're going to get. But uh, we all just have to be very informed so that we can concisely tell the people what they're voting for. It's a lot of money. And uh, so they know what stage the stage is at. Um, before I go back to you, Patricia, I'm going to open. Mr. Chair, can you hear me? You guys just froze on the video. Yes, yeah, same. I don't have any sound. Yeah, same here. Uh, let me look into that. Stand by. Post some more quarters in the machine. Oh, there you go. OK, there you go. Thank you, Seth. Back now? Great. Yes. Uh, thank you, board. Uh, thank you, advisory committee. I'm Paul Barkowitz. I am chair of the uh, Pier 44 Commission. We're trying to climb a mountain and I'm afraid we're tripping on a molding. Parking's important. Uh, and and we'll, we'll solve the parking problem, but you know, if the, if the CPC funding is improved, um, I don't know where this project goes. Um, you know, the next town meeting is you know, months away. And so, you know, what do we do in the meantime? Uh, the, the advisory committee brought these latest concerns to the CPC last week, Karen and I attended, and CPC listened and, and they unanimously and, and strongly continue to support uh, the funding. Uh, you know, the, the vote on uh, the town meetings for the funding is not, not for pavilions or how much parking, that, that's all going to be resolved. You know, just on the pavilion, uh, you know, we're trying to build a park, not a, not a pavilion. Uh, and we've had, um, our town meeting, we'll have had more than 60, six zero meetings. Um, this, this is our fourth meeting with the advisory committee. Uh, but we've had lots of other meetings and uh, two public uh, sessions uh, on March 7th, one during the day and one at night. So we could hear more voices. We had the survey that you mentioned. Uh, Copley Wolf, the design consultant, was blown away by the survey participation. They expected two or 300, and we had almost 1,300. Uh, you know, the CPC, uh, again, is comfortable, very emphatically stated, very comfortable with the process that you don't decide before you do all the investigations what, what the project's going to cost. Uh, we're following the process that's been done many times on many other projects that CPC has funded. So there's, there's nothing rogue about, you know, what we're doing or the process. It's very mainstream. And, um, you know, part of it, my expectation is that 100% of the cost will be through grant funding. There may be more CBC funding, but be part of what we've been doing, and, and your, your amazing staff, um, Corey Miles, uh, looking at grant funding opportunities, initiating those discussions, and there's a lot of excitement uh, for this project. You know, there's excitement about the flood resilience, the green space. Re reducing uh, pavement and uh, impermeables, uh, the water quality improvements that will come from this. So I'm, I'm encouraged by all the excitement I'm hearing you know, from everybody about it and, and all the, the meetings we've had, all the excitement. So what I'm asking is we not trip on these molehills. We don't want to come up with a project you know, in two years that everyone hates. We want a project that everyone loves. And so we'll address the parking. I can tell you 
There's a lot of work going on by Jim, Cameron, Corey Miles, looking at other par parking alternatives. We realize that's a big issue. But you know, in all these conversations, um, we've had a lot of people that said they want zero parking, maybe three or four spaces. And then others have said, just make it a big parking lot. And, and then we've been told we need to provide overflow parking for the Situa Tavern. So there's a lot of different points of view uh, on what should be done. But I would hope, you know, with the process we've had and the openness, our ability to go out and meet people and talk to people and, and listen, that to be a little more confidence in, in what we're trying to do, and that we're not going to end up with something that people don't like or it doesn't meet their needs. You know, for the pavilion, um, we heard we heard a lot of voices, uh, and this came through in the survey. One of the number one uh, desires in terms of use is for the farmers market. So. Uh, so we're trying to, okay, how, how can you accommodate that? Or we've heard, uh, you know, small uh, daytime music events, um, art shows. Um, you know, not everyone in our community can afford a $50,000 wedding. So we've heard this would be a, what a wonderful opportunity to have small weddings in an incredible view. It would feel like a million dollars. And if you have a covering, then you not only have the shade, but uh, it makes it all, all weather. So you could have your farmer's market, you know, like the Cohasset farmer's market for rains, they can't it. If you had a covering, you wouldn't have to do that. So our, our goal isn't to build a pavilion, and, and maybe that's not feasible, and, and maybe whatever it costs, we can't afford. But, um, that's, that's, we're trying to address what we're hearing from the community, okay? Things like that. Uh, another thing, I mean, there was a comment from Linda. I, I don't know where you heard this, Linda, but we never said it's a huge expense to do the uh, geotechnical work uh, for the pavilion or the whole site. I mean, Corey Miles has said that will cost $26,000. Of course, we have MAPC funds we, we could use for that. So it's, it's not a big cost. It's an important part of you know, going forward. So just in summary, um, I think we've had a, a really good process. We, it's, it's really great, all the community interest. Uh, everyone wants this to be successful. All of, everyone wants this to be a jewel or situate, uh, the gateway to the harbor. And so what we're asking just let us finish our job with the funding from CPC, so we can look at all the alternatives. There's nothing's baked into this other than a park. The pavilion's not baked into it. No parking, lots of parking, middle parking is not baked into it. But we're going to figure that out. And if we can develop some of these offsite places really close, uh, that'd be great. Thanks, Paul. Um, and I see you guys. I'll get to you guys in one second. So this is great discussion. We're all, believe it or not, we all want the same thing, right? We all want a beautiful piece of town uh, renovated and made better. And uh, I think all of the concerns are very valid. Um, you know, we're not trying to pitch each other here. What we want to do though is we want everybody to understand where the stage is. We've seen we've seen designs with pavilions with certain layouts. We don't know if we're picking between one of those three. So I think that's just our job at town meeting. To inform everybody that hey, this money is just going to take it to the next step, which may have this or may not have this or may may do whatever. So um, I'll open it up back to you guys for some comments. Let's try and not repeat ourselves and, and be brief and know that we're all on the same page as we want uh, that part done and done properly. So Patrice, I'll start with you. I think you raised your hand first. Um, right. I just wanted to say that I agree with what you say. I think it would be really important to delineate exactly where we are in the stage, what's been done and how much has been spent so far and what is expected to be the outcomes of the next, because I'm kind of getting lost in what's done already, what's gonna be done, but is different from what's already been done and how much, um, you know, what the overall cost is. And then my other question was, uh, and I don't even know if I need to ask it, but clarification about um, whether there's gonna be any 
um, possible, you know, potential costs for things that have already been suggested. You know, is the is Pavilion A, you know, going to cost a minimum of I don't know a million dollars or whatever, so that we all have some kind of an you know a notion of what kind of money we're thinking about spending here. And as people have pointed out too, where the money might come from because it might not come from citizens or might not come in great you know great amount from citizens that's all thanks okay i think we can get all those answers um elise hi yes thank you tony i just want so so i just just for clarity we're spending three hundred and three thousand. we we paid to the we are paying to the consultant who is doing phase one and two for the feasibility and then we're asking for another 300 from cbc plus we're getting another grant of 400 so seven hundred thousand dollars for pre-construction studies and surveys and work. Is that right? Is that the right number? Well, I, I prefer to actually put that on paper and do what you're asking us to do. And that is to outline what has been done to date, what has been spent to date, what is anticipated to be spent if the CPC money comes through. And I will say in terms of CPC money, um, any money that is not spent goes back to CPC. And I know you all know that, but not everyone in the world knows that. So needless to say, between all of our town uh, experts, employees, and you know, the, the Shark Commission, uh, and myself, I mean, I, I care about what we spend on things. So uh, if, if we can keep the cost to a minimum, that's what we will do. We just feel as though it's important to have the money available to us should we run into some unexpected issues. And um, the, the issue of coming up with a budget number will really depend on the final design that we choose. There doesn't seem to be any point in getting cost estimates on things that we aren't gonna build. So, um, and, and this is a, it's a timing issue, right? To try to figure out where you are at what point. So, Paul, anything? Uh, Linda, I'll give you the final word. Yeah, I, if somebody could just state that, Paul, we were told in advisory committee that the reason why this not excessive high amount of money was needed was because they had to do extra studies or extra feasibility things, whatever word you want to use, to find out if the property could support a pavilion. And the advisory committee is simply stating, why spend extra money to find out if you can build something if you don't have the parking. And, and saying, well, there might be parking here, there might be parking there. No farmer's market vendor is going to want to sell anything if there's no place for the customers to park. All we're trying to say is, if you're going to try and build a place for a $50,000 wedding, you need to have the parking. It's public parking. There's, there's businesses, everybody uses that. And to say, we, you know, you're going to put a pavilion in. When you ask people what they want, they're going to tell you they want the world. If you had said, hey, do you want to see a splash pad there? Half the people would say yes. You know, I mean, you can't, I think we need to just make sure that we're not spending money to find out if we can build something only to be told, but by the way, we don't have the parking. So if we don't have a good handle on where we're going to park 50 or 75 cars, we shouldn't spend extra money to do a study, an engineering study, to see if we can build something. And that's all advisory saying. Okay. Great. I think, can't we park at the end and just walk out? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, any quick Yeah, just sort of as I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry uh, if uh, Linda misheard what was said at some of our presentations, but the you know, the geotechnical work, which would include uh, doing borings for, you know, a pavilion could be supported as $26,000. So it's, it's not a big part of this budget. And again, you know, we, we wanted uh, originally, um, based upon what we heard from the community, we were hoping to have a, at least a small building on that property for, um, for um, you know, small events uh, for the visit center, maybe. but. But then when we did the investigation and we found that you couldn't have an enclosed building in, in that zoning without being on 10 foot high gears with 125 feet of ramp. So we, we took that off. 
So that's that's what the process is. Uh, again, I, I, this um, this fixation on on a pavilion is um, kind of puzzling to me. That's you know, it's what? not a pavilion; it's a park. Great. Okay, well, let's yeah, just, I just mean just try to put some numbers to compare other feasibility studies. I believe the new elementary school uh, just the feasibility is what one point one million. Uh, that we approved, so uh, this, this is a few hundred dollars. Uh, how expensive some of these uh, different studies uh, are? Mr. Chair, if I just add one thing real quick. I spoke in favor of moving forward at the advisory board just to be uh, completely open. I just want to give you two quotes from the Patriot Ledger. Uh, Situated officials are finally ready to decide what to do with the site of the former Pier 44 restaurant on Jericho Road. Quote, it's been debated and talked about purchased by every option, one way or the other, the board will digest what the current public definitive use for it. And that was a quote from Chairman Joe Norton on September 18, 2012. <laughs> so this has been sitting for quite a while. I think the board has the right position that we need to go and get it to a point where you can put it to the boards and say, here's what we want to do, yes or no, what do you want to do? Okay. Well, here's what I'm going to say. This conversation has been very good because it's told us exactly what answers we need because 400 people are going to have these same questions in a couple in a month. So we'll get all of that. We know what we need to do. We know what we need to have to inform people, and we'll have the answers for them at the town meeting. Um, at least I see you have your, your hand raised. I'll give you the, the last and final word. Okay, thanks, Tony. I'll be quick. I just want to say, I know we're saying it doesn't seem like a lot of money relative to the size of the project, and we don't know what the size of the project is. So $700,000 is a lot of money in my estimation if we're only going to end up spending two or $3 million on this thing. It's looking to me like it's going to get to be a much bigger project. And that's really what I'm worried about. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there any other CPC articles? I think we all, we all kind of in, in sync with that. Except for, well, thank you very much for coming in. And thank you for all the time you put into this. It'll get there. It won't get there Don't quickly, but it will get there. Don't be frustrated. All right. So now um, the rest of the articles we stopped at um, CPC C12 reconciliations. We've got the VOTEC agreement uh, for the amendment to include Marshfield into the into their program. Any questions on that? And then chapter 91, which is basically paperwork. Um, and then we've got two zoning bylaws common driveways and parking requirements. Any questions on any of those? Good. All right. Um, final word from the board? Any? No? Jamie, any final? I want to thank everybody for being respectful and civil. I think everybody has good vantage points here. Ultimately, it's our voters that decide what we end up doing. And I always have great faith in that a lot of times. So let's all just stay positive and we will get through this. Yes. And thank yeah. all of my committee for being here tonight. Do you want to adjourn your meeting first? Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? So moved. Thank you, Jerry. Nancy, can you call? Mr. Gilmore? Aye. Ms. Seidel? Aye. Ms. Metro? Yes. Ms. Russo? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. McGuigan? Aye. Thank you all for, for coming. Any uh, have a motion to adjourn army? So moved. Second by Second. Ms. Curran. And can we have a roll call vote also? Ms. Ms. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Connolly? Aye. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for videoing. Thank you in the back. Have